everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. If you haven't subscribed, consider following me on Instagram at watch underscore complications and check out my blog, watchcomplications.com. This is a video I've hinted at in the past couple, and that is a review, along with the wrist check, of my Vacheron Constantin. This is the 49145 reference. I'll give you the rest of the digits in the video. This is an amazing watch, which I have recently added to my collection. Again, I'm going to talk about it being a stepping stone to some of my other watches I'm wanting to get to, but this watch is all me, and I've consolidated, sold a bunch of stuff, and I've wound up with this. We're going to take macro views, of course. I'm going to show you what the box looks like with this sort of a watch and all the wonderful details. One of the things I want to say generally about watches first, and for those of you who have read much of my content or watched many of my videos, know that I just simply do me. I don't really care what other people think about certain watches, certain brands, or what I'm wearing on a given day, I could care less. I do me. And so I have watches like this, and right also here on my desk, I have another watch I wear, I've worn probably three or four times this week. This is the Casio MRW 200H. I have a review of this on my blog, and you know, this is a watch I've worn three or four times this week. I wear this when it's hot, when I'm going swimming, doing yard work. I wear this watch all the time. And so I don't care if you're into watches from stuff like this $20 Casio all the way up to this Haute Horology VC. Watches are awesome and I like most of them unless they're ugly, in which case don't wear it. So whether I'm reviewing something like this or if I'm doing a low cost series watch, I've got a couple Pagani's coming. I'm going to review those for the low cost series. You know, just do you enjoy watches for what they are at whatever price point is responsible for you. So that's that. Now, if you're new to VC, and I'm going to use the abbreviation VC a lot through the rest of the video instead of saying the entire name. Now, to a native like French speaker, there are a couple ways to say the name Vacheron Constantin. There's a fast way and a slow way. If you want to put that E in the middle of the first name, Vacheron, and that ending is a little bit sort of internal. I call it sort of nasally. It's to the back of the throat a little bit. Vacheron or Vacheron Constantin. That's what we're looking at today. Now, the Royal Eagle has been around a long time. It's been around since the early 2000s, 2001, 2002. And this model, which is a special US edition, came along in 2007. This specific one was manufactured in 2008 and is limited to 100 pieces in the US. And I love brown. Let's look at it. All right, so this watch was pre-owned and I did get it with, you know, box and papers. There is an outer box that goes with this, which I've not got shown here in the, in the shot. But here's some of the stuff you would get with a watch of this quality. So first of all, this is the user manual, nice leather bound. You know, it's got the, you know, certificate of origin in it. It's got this cool history and story of VC. And it's got, you know, the user guide, the guarantee information, the service information, etc. So yeah, this is a nice little you know leather bound. It's got the you know Maltese cross on it, and then you have you know, paperwork and things like that. This is the main information though. This is the important part. I'll get to this in just a second. And this is the inner box. You can see this is a special U.S. edition. It's got wood on the bottom, and this leather on top. Little details. You can see the cross there as well on the little push button. It's cool. And pop this open. And in here you have, you know, your cleaning cloth and you'd have the watch displayed at an angle. Got the branding in here as well, of course. Now, a lot of watches come with just one strap or bracelet. This actually came with two. One is the one I would prefer it on, which is this alligator uh, brown leather with the red stitching. It goes very well on it. It also comes with a rubber strap that has a lug design that fits perfectly with the case. Just a very boring shade of brown though and i don't actually like the design of it but it's there somebody might like it but i'm going to keep it on the strap it came with so that's the box so this is a wonderful uh, presentation in terms of the materials and the information about the watch this is essentially your certificate of authenticity and of course very well done this is the Royal Eagle Malt Special U.S. Edition. It's the 49145 000A9308 
what a reference number, eh? So you can see this one was made in 2008. Their Royal Eagles have been around for a while, uh, since the early 2000s, like I said, 2001. And there are a lot of variants out there. It's, you know, not everyone's taste, you know, with the tonal case and everything, but I particularly was looking for a tonal case and this was one that really stood out to me. There are versions out there with printed numerals. You can see that special editions have applied Arabic numerals, as you can see there. And there's some special things about this one. And I'll list all the specs of the movement and the dial and everything in the video as we start looking at the watch. But there's some great things to note about this. But great little presentation. They have a photo of the actual watch, uh, which they put in here, which is kind of interesting. This is a literal photograph pasted inside the document. And it's a photograph of this watch. It, the numbers match. Again, this is just a form of verification. And then it was made and finished and ready for sale October 27th, 2008. You can see it's a LE of 100 pieces for this Royal Eagle. So let's take a look at the watch and talk specs. And no, I don't just read from online or elsewhere. I take my own calipers and scales to these things. So we've got a width without the crown and pushers of this Tono style case is about 36.15 millimeters is what I measured. With the crown, so measuring from the crown to this side of the case is about 39 and a half millimeters. So just under 40 millimeter width. Now the height is 13 and a half, which given the complications and the shape of the case is not bad at all. This will fit nicely wrapping around the wrist and can fit under a cuff it can be sporty, it can also be dressy. For those of you that want a VC, but the overseas isn't for you, you know, I don't particularly like everything about the design, the style. This is a great watch that has the same movement and is just a beautiful, beautiful look, okay? Now, remember, that's just the Gen 1, Gen 2 overseas. The lug to lug, that's the key on this, is 52 millimeters. These are exaggerated lugs. It's where a lot of the robustness of the case comes into play. So it is long. You gotta have a medium to larger size wrist for this to look at least more natural on it, but it does fit better than you would expect given the lug to lug being 52 millimeters. The strap width, lug width is 19 millimeter. And I don't think I saw that anywhere else in any documentation or in any other reviews. So it's an odd number and a lot of different types of brands will use that so that their straps are not easily interchangeable with standard sizes that are even like 18, 20, 22, 24. It's a 19 millimeter lug width. It's a heavy one. Again, given the complications and the robust movement on the leather strap, this is over hundred grams. I measured it at 105.5 grams and it's a three ATM 30 meter depth rating. So this is not a watch you want to get wet, clearly. It's not a screw down crown, it's just a regular pushing crown and you've got the pushers. Don't get this thing wet. The case is stainless steel. Again, it's not a screw down crown. It is sapphire crystal on the front, solid case back. The sapphire does have anti-reflective coating. The movement in this is based on the Frederick Piguet 1185. What Vacheron Constantin has done to make it sort of their own, you might say, is that the numerals on the date are independent. They're not together on the same date wheel. Think to my How It Works series, maybe I'll eventually do something on a grand date like this, but you have two wheels. One's in play on the left side here that spins between zero and three, and you've got another wheel in play here on the right that spins between zero and nine. These are independent, but they flip at the same time. It's a 21 six vibrations per hour movement. So it's not being overworked, you might say. It's a pretty steady as you go movement. 37 joules, and of course we've got a chrono with a vertical clutch. I will show you in a second a comparison with a horizontal clutch of what we mean by a column wheel chronograph and what that looks like. Power reserve is about 40 hours, and we have complications, small seconds at six, the grand date and the chronograph. It's a non-hacking movement. Again, I'll talk about that in just a second. The dial is a brown sunburst. It's got a wonderful texture to it. Again, that curved case 
and crystal make it a little bit harder to notice all the wonderful things about it you know on a video as opposed to seeing it in the flesh you can see that there is some shadowing with the chronograph subdials not the small seconds that's also a tono style here we, when we got the minutes and the hours for the chronograph which is really subtle but clever again it goes with the overall design aesthetic so this royal eagle u.s special edition and other special editions one of the things that makes them special is that the applied arabic numerals the applied indices where they might be placed the counters and the broadsword hands are all 18 karat white gold you might also notice that there is some loom on the hands and so it does stand out that adds to the sporty feel of it and it does stand out a little bit more at night than you would normally see on this sort of a you know hold horology sort of a piece strap is brown alligator with red stitching it also came with a brown rubber as i mentioned and we've got a steel double deployant clasp that has a nice contrast between polished and blasted surfaces and it is pressure fitted so there's no buttons or anything you can see the way that these arms are cut there's essentially some give to them so that when they're pressed between the central surface you can see there pressure is just keeping it in place and it's beautifully done this is not going to pop off of your wrist and of course we have the maltese cross very distinguishable clasp for the vacheron constantin so why did i end up with this one is i wanted something with a tono case i was looking at rectangular cases you know cartier some vintage rolexes really aren't my thing and this struck all the points i also have a little bit of a larger wrist you know compared to let's say an average i have about a seven and a half inch wrist about 19 centimeters and this fits really well one thing is it's just me it's me and a watch one i like brown you might recall i have a christopher ward uh, bronze watch that's an ombre i've reviewed the seiko irish coffee both of those watches are nice i've sold the seiko actually because i was wasn't wearing it compared to the ombre but i love a brown dial and this has that still this watch has a lot of things going on it's got brown, it's got red, it's got contrast here in terms of the printing of the numerals. We've got applied versus printed on the subdials. We have the grand date, we have polishing versus brush. There's a vision here and it's a singular vision. It flows so well together from a design perspective. And that's what I like about it. There's some variants out there of the Royal Eagle. This is one of the special ones. It really is a special edition. The applied numerals are white gold as are the hands and the counters are white gold 18 karat white gold and you can see there's some loom on the broadsword hands it's kind of a sporty art deco look which i absolutely adore the tono case which is something i've been looking for usually tono cases vintage all the way back to like 1912 very frank Mueller sort of a look you see the lugs are quite flared on this it's very exaggerated in a way and it, it just flows though even given all those different things it flows well the regular versions of the royal eagle will have automatic underneath of the small seconds here at six you can see this does not you can also notice up close that we have the hour markers and the 30 down here along with the 60 at 12 you can see it up there are printed in red these red highlights that pop visually in lots of different ways particularly the chronograph seconds hand and the printing on the subdials. So what I want to show you is here's my Marlowe watch company Le Monde Panda. It's a chronoscope. It's a great looking watch. I love this watch. But it has a column wheel chronograph as well. Now this has a horizontal clutch as opposed to a vertical clutch. But it at least will illustrate the concept of what a column wheel is and you can see it right here. It's a column because it's kind of tall. It's like a little tower sitting in there and you can see that the arm here is holding on to sitting right at one of these points okay so let's start the chronograph and you'll see the chronograph wheels will start turning so there you can see that released the chronograph is now going okay now i'm going to stop it you can see that column wheel turn and then i'm going to reset Okay, you can see that flip back, that's the seconds hand flipping back to 12. 
So that's a column wheel chronograph, you know, sort of at a meta talk level. But, you know, not going detail with it right now, but that's what we're talking about here, except this has a vertical clutch. And so you could leave this seconds hand going and not worry about wear and tear too much over time. With regards to the chronograph, it is tactile, means you can feel the pressure of the, of the buttons, the pushers as you push them. It's like a snap, you could hear that, perhaps. It's a snap, you can hear it. Very satisfying from a usability standpoint. I love how the markers are in red. It's just beautiful. Stop, and then snap straight back and that's just you can fill the entire thing release it's just less wear and tear this vertical clutch is just wonderful i love using the chrono on this and it can run non-stop for 12 hours and not cause a lot of additional wear and tear you just got to keep that power reserve up when using the chrono and i mentioned this in my how it works video on the hacking complication is this is a non-hacking movement a lot of high horology watches are non-hacking. And I use this watch as an example that you can stop that seconds hand. We can pull this out to the time setting and I can put slight backward pressure on the minute hand, like I'm gonna set it, right? So I can put backward pressure and that seconds hand is gonna stop instantly. You can see it stop there. When I let go, it starts going again. So the coolest feature on this watch, based on the conversation I just mentioned about hacking, is that I pulled this out the time setting. You see the second hand is continuously moving. It's 4.04 right now. So if I go back to about the time that I want to set it, about the minute marker I want to set it, you see it's about 30 seconds, 35 seconds. When I push the crown in all the way, the minute hand will move. It snaps to the appropriate location for the minute that you are setting the time based on the seconds. It's amazing. So you don't need hacking with a sophisticated movement like this. The design, the engineering behind this is brilliant in that you don't have to have a hacking movement whenever the minute hand will align itself based on the seconds and where they are so that whenever you hit 60 seconds or zero, you might think of it as, it is properly aligned with the minute marker. That happens automatically with this sort of haute horology movement. Of course, this thing has a superlative chronometer status. It is absolutely accurate. I wore this for like about two weeks after first getting it, and it lost not even a second, I think, across almost two weeks. It's insanely accurate, and it's just a beautiful watch all around. Let's take a close-up look. Macro time. Okay, so here we're going to do our up-close macro look. At this watch, you can see this beautiful sunburst brown dial. It catches the light in different ways. You might notice there's a slightly different color around the subdials. It also has sort of the tonal shape to it, which is really interesting. It's like they're offset a little bit, shadowed. See the counters are 18 karat gold along with the numerals and the broadsword hands with the loom. You can see the red accents. There you see like the 30 Swiss made. Because of the natural curve of the case and the sapphire, it has AR coating, but it is catching light in all sorts of ways and almost never looks the same, no matter what angle you're looking at it from. Here you can see the logo very well. This sort of Art Deco sporty style, you can see the numerals cut off in certain ways, which is really interesting, different. I'm glad they didn't chop off the six like some other brands do. <laughs> Just leave it off. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's beautifully done. Of course, you can't get more precise than what they're going to do on this sort of high-end horology sort of piece. I love how the counterbalance on the seconds hand is exaggerated as it is. It just brings red to the surface in 
to match these, you know, printed numerals on the subdials. Or the size difference, right, with the 60 right here versus the 15, 30, and 45. They're just, uh, you got four printed on the subdial on the left, right? Then you got the hours and the minutes here. See, there's the crown pushers. Again, I love these rectangular pushers. Let's look at the back here. Brushing is beautiful. Contrast between polished, brushed, blasted. See that's blasted in there. Again, it's pressure that just holds these in. See the stitching on the strap there. The VC clasp. Engraving of the number. See these exaggerated lugs. Brushed, polished, and worn. Best combination in the world. You see the printing on the date. Look at it from an angle. I mean, come on, come on. How beautiful is that? And I'm not gonna tease you anymore. Done. What a beautiful watch this Vacheron Constantin is, and I, I just love it, I adore it. It's so different, it's unique, it stands out. It's, it's very me, it's got some sportiness to it, it's got some dress to it, and it's just all around great horology. I can't stress enough, no matter where you are in your watch journey, whether you're just starting out and you're into low, mid-level range watches, or you've got a grail in mind, or maybe you're sort of already dabbling in sort of mid to higher end watches, no matter what, just enjoy watches for what they are, wear them, you know, buy within your means, enjoy them, don't just buy things and stick it in the box, I don't care if it's a $10 watch or a you know, $100,000 watch, wear them enjoy them you know get the most out of them it's you know life is too short to worry about the rest so you know with something like this I, I wear it i love it and it's not going to just sit in a box but at the end of the day just be you and build your watch collection based on you and you only i'm brian this is watch complications subscribe if you haven't join the party here follow me on instagram at watch underscore complications and check out the website watchcomplications.com i will see you soon